this season on Game of Bros. Bring it on, G. Ten celebrity Nisian wannabe warriors. I went out and got a special brush. Fighting for one prize. Heart! There will be winners. Last row, that's all you got, Jimmy, last row. There will be losers. And there will be lots of sexy slow motion running. But only one warrior will win the ultimate prize. A $10,000 donation for a charity of the victor's choosing. Gifted by the friendly followers at iSecurity. Keeping an eye on our community. The sisters are crashing the party on this season of Game of Thrones. Game of Bros. Carlos, you ended up with four. Then he got the fifth one, and I was like, oh, all good, but really, I was like, oh, let's go. Five's probably doable. Oh! But he just kept going. Oh, man, this girl could do it. Time! Oh. Thank God she didn't come away with more than seven. Carlos struggles trying to grab it with his mouth, and Makarek cuts him right off. It's a race! Go back it! I dropped the duck. I beat him twice today. <laughs> so now Carlos is gone, and inside, I'm secretly very happy. I'd heard that he was running around calling himself the alpha male and other people were, were agreeing, but uh, there can only be one. <laughs> Almost felt bad feeding him. <laughs> Maybe I just need to like back myself a bit more, you know? <laughs> so we rock up first thing. I see we're in the lawns. So we're quite lucky and stoked to be land-based today, not in the pool, getting wet. See a few boards and stuff. Um, I've got a feeling there could be a little bit of archery going on. I kind of think maybe it's some kind of shooting. Definitely individual, though, obviously, because there's five of them. So I'm either thinking it's a bit of archery or somewhat of a treasure hunt, and I'm not good at either of them. So... <laughs> Everyone's trying to play the weakest link, trying to talk it down, but, you know, I don't really think there is a weakest link in this uh, final five. Congratulations on your progress so far in our Game of Bros journey. Who knew that uh, at the beginning of this competition when we started with 10 competitors, we would come down to three girls and two boys, obviously, Makere, Miriam and <laughs> Yeah, I reckon I'd give him a mean go, hard. I'd give him a hiding. Yeah. Last time we had to say goodbye to Carlos, and unfortunately for one of you, your Game of Bros journey ends today. Yeah, about to get my head chopped off, maybe. I am definitely worried about Miriama and Makere. Oh, the wahine. Makere, the wairua of Henemoa flowed through you last week. Yeah. You've had to survive three weeks in a row now. Yep. Do you think that makes you the favourite to win this competition? Well, according to these guys, <laughs> yes, but I don't know, like, yeah, I don't really know how I'm still here, to be honest. <laughs> I guess these elimination challenges have sort of boosted my confidence and sort of reminded me, oh, you know what, you know, just cos I'm a wahine doesn't mean I can't keep up with the men. Miriam, so far in the competition, it's proved that muscles aren't always the biggest thing. Who amongst your competitors has surprised you the most? I would have to say Jimmy has surprised me the uh, most. All of us, he is yes. definitely yep. an <laughs> anomaly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's one out of the box, for sure. Jimmy has been playing it down this whole time, and I think he's very good. I, I, I yeah, he's um, he's a snake in the grass. Dave, like you know, at the start we were enemies, then we were brothers, now we're enemies again. If we had uh, what fist fight, Joe, I'd give him a hiding, cause Jimmy, you've been riding the coattails of 
the actual actual competitors throughout <laughs> this entire competition. Yeah, I feel all good. I'm glad Carlos is gone. I just, I really wanted Kai and Carlos to go and mark it Hopefully she's today. <laughs> so, uh, um, <laughs> no, just competitive. Hey, it's a game, man. Competitive. No, nah, I'm joking. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to try my best and hopefully mark it goes home today. <laughs> At some stage, you're actually going to have to do something by yourself. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, that's what I'm not looking forward to. <laughs> not looking forward to that. I've been relying on the teams lately, you know. Bit nervous, bro. I'm actually quite scared. Today is all about power and speed. Oh, what? Brain power. Oh, all good. Oh, oh filth. Okay. And thinking on your feet. Oh. All good. Oh. I'm gone. I'm just not good at that stuff. I'm very worried. This week, you will be testing your puzzle-solving oh. abilities. Oh. <laughs> I am feeling pretty confident. I do love a good challenge, like a mind game. This is a scavenger hunt. Oh. No! Yes, Jimmy. I've never done a scavenger hunt in my life. It makes me a little bit excited, because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm a bit worried, and I'm actually nervous. Like, I'm sitting there actually starting to sweat. Your ultimate goal is to hunt out all three items and return them before any of your competitors. Each of you have three envelopes with your name on them. Each envelope contains two coded clues. You each have a chalkboard equipped with a secret code key which will help you decipher one of your clues. That clue, once decoded, will reveal where you need to look. While the other clue, a riddle, will tell you what you are looking for. You must open one envelope at a time and solve those clues before you may move on. You are searching for some of the same items, but they may not be in the same place. If you return with an item that has not been revealed from your clues, you will be disqualified and go straight through to the elimination challenge. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, <sighs> goody. The first three that finish with all items in their kete will be safe from elimination. The final two, one of you will be going home. It's an individual challenge, and this is our first individual challenge that we've actually had. It sort of puts a bit more pressure. I'm feeling the pressure. You've only got yourself to blame. You know, usually you can blame Jimmy. <laughs> this is a big area. We have to use this whole area. I don't know how well I'm going to do it. I should do all good, though. I don't think everyone else is that good, either. Kimi hia ranga haua kai hia ngā taonga. Toru. Rua. Tahi. Haere. E game of bros. This is a scavenger hunt. Your ultimate goal is to hunt out all three items and return them before any of your competitors. Each of you have three envelopes with your name on them. Each envelope contains two coded clues. One clue will reveal where you need to look, and the other will tell you what you are looking for. The first three will be safe from elimination. As soon as I undid the envelope, I understood what we were supposed to do. But my writing's not very good. I <laughs> see, what the heck is this? Headless duck, long ure. Oh. <laughs> what the heck is this spell? The tohu were actually Rapanui scripts, which were quite amazing. I had no clue. Wait, are we sure every picture is on these? Challenges started, weird symbols. Are they upside down or something? Yes, so we got to crack codes and stuff. I'm not really good at that. Your clue is upside down, you idiot. That's probably why they were weird, actually. Solar panel. And I looked to my right, and there goes Miriamma. And I'm thinking, man, I haven't seen any solar panels anywhere. It's pretty easy to sort of crack the code, so I know where I'm looking. And I'm looking for a rock pool. Marketer, she's second out of the blocks. The wahine are the ones to beat. I'm worn on the feet and handy to beat. So I know I'm looking for a pair of shoes or jandals. Oh, man. My heart starts pumping at that point, because I'm sitting there trying to figure out my freaking clue, and I'm worried about what she's doing. My first clue is that it's prehistoric, and it's native to New Zealand, and that the studio opened up in 1987 that was named after it. So immediately, I think, Weta Workshop, Weta. I spelt it wrong, actually, so, yeah, my code cracking was, wasn't that good. Spelt it 
Uh, Lele Pond. Bloody little Jimmy beat me out the blocks too, so... <laughs> Oh, I was gutted about that one. What the? F so, first clue, Lily Pond, and I have to find the Jandal. I'm looking for Jandals, cuz Jandals. Oh, this is ridiculous. I got Tohenge to Tohangu. Ta. Finally figured out that it was Tohunga. So, B. Man, when you add the competition into it, it takes on a whole new level. I started to rush. I went to read my first word. I was going, hmm, it's not a word. <laughs> And I look back and Dave is still sitting there, old butterbean. Oh, this is f***. I'm getting a different one each time. Yeah, no, it, was, it wasn't going well. My first riddle was pretty tough. I'm at the beginning of the tour. No idea. Uh, a singing Tani. Hmm, kia ora, mate. The last bit gave it away, which was, you know, I'm usually in Ponamu, but I'm plastic these days. Choice. Tiki. Bamboo poles. Is this a rock pole? I'm looking for a rock pole, and I'm spending a lot of time around this pond, and I know deep down this ain't a rock pole. Oh, this is hard. But I'm still looking because I'm pretty sure I have not seen a rock pole here. I'm running around, chasing my tail, and then I find this big, giant solar panel. Then, da-ding, there's a pool. And I know there's rocks around it. Yeah, bro, hard. I was just looking for a jandal, jandal, you know, whack, whack. I'm a native of Aotearoa. I've been around since the age of the dinosaurs. Is that wetter? I think what I was worried about was that it was going to be a real wetter. No way, man, they wouldn't do that to me. They wouldn't make me pick up and find a real wetter. And what do you know? There's a jandal. This must be it. Okay. Worn on the feet. Handy to beat. Boom, that's the first one in the bag. I searched around for quite a while, actually, to find the location. When I found the location... I really oh, shit! Oh, I just went nuts. Scavenging everywhere. Just ripping things up, you know. <laughs> I was desperate to find it. I finally found it. Oh, kia ora mai! Tell her, mate, there's my tiki. Let's go and get you in that kitty. And then there it is, the little wetter looking at me. <laughs> wetter. I was looking for bamboo plants and I should have been looking for just poles, you know. Then I run back and I see that Makere and Tumi here have already found their first. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, if they beat me, it's up to me and Dave and Jimmy left. I've got to beat these guys because there's no way I want to do an elimination challenge. Hey, Jimmy. Yeah? You seen any bamboo around? Nah, bro. <laughs> See, this is where this uh, screwed me up because I was actually looking for a big jandal, one you get a hiding with. Bro, where is this, G? And then I remembered that uh, it has to fit in the kete kete, so I was like, well, obviously it's going to be small. It, I took ages looking for it. Oh, man, it's embarrassing. <laughs> Over there. I was, like, looking for the bushes and stuff, and then it was hanging by a keychain, G, just... What are you up to, Jimmy? What are you for? Once I found them, it was no problem. My second one, I'm looking for a tohunga. Oh, God. And we've used the tohunga in the past challenges, so I know how to spot that. Then I'm looking for this native New Zealand... I think it's going to be an animal. I'm not quite sure. Thinking of, like, a kiwi or something. I'm off. Cool. The clue was comfy on the feet and handy to beat. Straight away, I knew it was it was the channels. Rock pull. I am one on the feet and handy to beat. Jandal. Solar panel. I'm at the start of a tour, the head of a singing tane at the front of a lounge. Second item, tiki. I get Lily Pond, I look over and it's huge. But it'll be motivation, no excuses. The code I got was a tiki. I actually still don't even understand what I'm looking for. What's that? But I find the tohunga, and then for a moment there, I thought I was going to have to carry the tohunga back. So I look at the pond, and I'm like, it's not a rock pool, it's a pond. I know it's a pond, but my brain is like, maybe they're trying to trick you, so I run to the pond. Looking bloody hard. It's so hard to find this one. Running around. Oh, 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 there. 
And then as I look to the right by the swimming pool, there is the rock pool. So good. Just lift up a couple of leaves. Got a massive fright. <laughs> I'm such a fright. It's okay. fake. That's the winter. Yep. yep, boom, that's my second one. Bamboo poles. Looked around, sort of surveyed from one position, which was a mistake. It's a mistake because I saw Miriama. She did a full lap all around the entire whenua, just taking her time. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I need I need to do that. I need to survey the, the land. But I didn't do that. And uh, that cost me about 20 minutes searching in this bamboo bush, uh, scouring, and I didn't find a thing. Actually, first solar panel I saw was at the neighbours, so I started walking towards their house. Uh, we don't use that house, though, eh? Then I remembered that Y said, uh, like, the neighbours' houses and stuff aren't involved. I was scouring that lily pond. I was looking through everything on my hands and knees. So I'm looking for bamboo poles. When I went out for the first time, I was able to sort of scout what was around the property. So off I was to the bamboo poles and knew exactly where I was going. Had no idea what I was looking for. Must be a ponamu of some sort. Tonga, tonga. I am the start of a tour, the head of a singing tane, and the front of a lounge. So I'm looking for a tiki. I'm running around frantically looking for my tonga. I can't see it anywhere. I wasted a hell of a lot of time trying to find this ponamu. I tell you, I was looking through all the bush. Tucked away inside the bush is the tohunga. It's about to go down a bloody rabbit hole. Tip him upside down, check his nono, nothing's there. Ah! I was getting quite frustrated, actually. So I look around in the bush, and there is my tiki hanging from the tree. Spent so much time trying to find this ponamu. But I didn't even look on the bamboo poles. I'm the only one there at this stage, and I know I've got it. <laughs> but gosh, I tell you what, my shoulders went like this. First time I haven't been in an elimination challenge. Stoked. And now, well, it's uh, dog eat dog. Holy heck, I think Jimmy and Dave might be right behind, you know, so I have to get in third. I have to. This is close as was our neck and neck. Tomua, the game of bros. The first three will be safe from elimination. You finish first. <laughs> Mark it in, second place. Jimmy, Dave, two men. You each still have two items to find. It was our neck and neck. Holy heck, I have to get in third, I have to. It's a race for third. I saw the actual bamboo set up down in the corner, so frickin' sprinted off down there, finding the next clue, and I'm under the pump at that point. Is this all panel? I found them eventually. They were like rubber solar panels, though, so I still wasn't sure if it was it, but then I was like, this has to be it. This is the pond. This is Lily's shore. Please, God, help me. <laughs> something. Give me something. A lily pond. Frick, this lily pond is about the size of friggin' Lake Taupo. I'm a native of Aotearoa. I've been around since the age of the dinosaurs. Weta. Man, I spent ages looking for that bloody tiki. I don't think that's... I'm sure someone hit it. Put it over there, back where I found it. No one was caught, but I'm sure someone hit it. The stoked ass was pumped. It was just a massive relief, bro. It was just, it felt awesome. Papa to me here. That's three. I'm going with it wasn't there, and that's why I lost. So I didn't lose because I was bad at it. I lost because someone hid my stuff. So, yeah, that's me and Dave in the Elimination Challenge. Going to go hard, though. Go hard or go home. Congratulations on getting through the first challenge, team. Dave, uh, <laughs> you were very suspicious, and you thought that somebody may have hidden one of your tonga away? 100%. <laughs> I'm sticking with it. That's the reason I <laughs> lost. Really? It's, you know, that competitive spirit. No one likes losing.
Jimmy, scavenger. We can just skip me, bro, and yeah. move on. Just, <laughs> just go. Scavenger hunts, they're not really your thing? Nah, bro, you know, um, just didn't use my eyes like my mum said, and just got rolled, G, got rolled. <laughs> got rolled, got smashed. Got a hiding, guys. <laughs> Everyone's been riding him off every day, and he's been letting everyone ride him off and playing the joker, you know, playing the just the guy who mucks around, doesn't really care. He cares all right. I'm sorry to hear that uh, scavenger hunts aren't your thing, but unfortunately for you, our elimination challenge is another scavenger hunt. Oh. But this one is underwater. Oh. Even worse, <laughs> even worse, can't, can't even can't swim. swim. Yeah, no, I can't swim. I never, ne I never learnt. Jimmy, you any better at swimming? Nah, I suck at swimming. Worse, probably worse at swimming than scavenger hunting. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just gonna get oh. rolled again. <laughs> yeah, he said he can't swim. Who knows? I don't know many white people who can't swim. Both Dave and Jimmy proclaim that they don't like the water and that they can't swim. So if that's the case, it's gonna be a disaster. Can we just start this already so I can know if I'm getting a hiding or I'll not? tell you the rules. This elimination challenge is a head-to-head -head race to find three items hidden in the bottom of the pool. Again, you will need to figure out the clues in order to find out what you are searching for. There are no rules. Just decode, swim, dive, search as fast as you can. The first person to place all three items on their mat will make it through to the final four. The loser will have to hit the road. I think I mimied my pants up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see me and Dave at the start, bit of beef. It's like a love-hate relationship, you know? It's like brothers, bro, we're brothers, you know? Nah, stuff you. I'm going all out, 100%. I told Jimmy, don't come near me. Expect elbows, headbutts, and anything that, anything, anything's gonna go. No peeing in the pool. Yep. Ready? Uh, OK. <laughs> Three, two, one, hide. My first clue was I've got eight legs, but I have trouble walking. As Soon as I saw eight legs, I just didn't continue reading, and I just went for the weather that I saw straight away. I should have um, read the clue a bit more on that first go. I rushed off without really getting it. As I pulled it off, I just wanted to make sure it had eight legs, so I counted six. Ended up just picking up anything and going back because I knew I had to read it again. I was like half sure, and then I just looked at why, and he was like, "Nah, that's wrong." Yeah, okay, knew that wasn't it. Once I got back there, read it again. I, I, I had an idea what I was looking for. They've both bought back with the two wrong things, so they're pretty even at this stage. I went and grabbed the octopus, and that had eight tentacles. But then I had to make sure, so I had to ask why. The tentacles counted as legs. And then he gave me a nod, and then I was like, ah, oh, I got it. Yes, I saw my white piece of coral. I saw Jimmy was right there with me, so it was uh, neck and neck. Can't buy it, Jimmy. So I turned over my second clue. Sea creatures like to live in me sometimes. So I knew straight away it was like one of those shells. The second clue was, uh, was obvious to me. It was, uh, it was an octopus. I was backing Jimmy all the way. You know, for the next few weeks, a couple of episodes, I want to be there with Jimmy having a laugh. I just look at Butterbean, he just looks hungrier. To be honest, I, I couldn't even tell you who was going to win. Like, I had no idea. It was anyone's game. Oh, I was like, oh, yo, this is close as. So they got their last piece now to go, and this is a nail-biting finish. No, I'm still backing Jimmy all the way. I think he's going to take it. The third clue it was a shell. You know, it was a fighting for creatures. I knew straight away what it was, and I'd seen it. I'd seen one before. I think when Dave went for the first one and got that wrong, he had come across his third one, so I already knew where that was. So I just try to calm myself and not panic. I saw Jimmy going right towards the end of the pool. I just knew my last one was at the end for some reason, so I just started going to the end. Yeah, once I found it, you know, I was like, just soaking in that smell, that smell of victory. And here comes Blimmin' Butterbean, gets his third piece, and it's right there next to the end, so... <laughs> Dave, you are safe from elimination. Yeah! Just straight win right there, G. Far cheaters, ain't 
stuff you Oh, man, man no excuses. Can't swim. Still get it done. <laughs> Boom, I can't swim. What's your problem? <laughs> like, yeah. You can't swim, Butterbean. That was amazing. That's the Butterbean way. <laughs> oh, I didn't think I was going to make it this far. Then I got halfway and I was like, Ooh, I might be able to win then. Nick Mano, <laughs> nah, <bo. laughs> Mean experience, mean time, had heaps of fun, bro. Not just an experience, but a life experience for me. Loved it, brother. I think is that I can't win the money for kids' camp. Uh, sorry, kids. I'll just have to feed them in another way. Feed them with laughter instead, bro, you know? That's what I'll do, cuz. Then hopefully, uh, along the line, I can do my own little charity thing, you know? Hatera Wiki, Irungaya Game of Bros. The challenge today is actually making the fire the way that our Polynesian ancestors did it in the old days. I'm thinking, how on earth are we supposed to light the fire? He made it look pretty effortless. I just knew it can't be that easy. <laughs> Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.